to see. And I'm one half of the Switchblade Sisters social club, exploiting my worst fear by going away without my sister Rhonda. For your entertainment? <laughs> Um, no, it's not all sad. Um, I'm actually in New Orleans. If you've been following my socials, um, our socials on Switchblade Sister Social Club, you will probably have seen some of the photos. It's been amazing. And so I just wanted to give our Patreon patrons, Patreon patrons, um, just a little update and a little talk through some of the stuff uh, that I've been doing here. I'm sure lots of you have been to New Orleans, but it's so fucking awesome here. Um, I actually used to come to New Orleans. I've been a couple of times when I was much younger, when I was like in my 20s, late teens. Um, but I'm here for Essence Festival, which is the festival of culture for Black people. Um, me and my sister are not Black, but we are allies and strongly believe that um, marginalized communities should stick together in order to help us strive and achieve our basic rights and preferably more. So um, I'm actually here on a couple of writing assignments, which we'll, we'll share when they come out. Um, but also here for a lot of fucking fun times. Um, sorry, this is coming from the hotel room. I tried to tidy up a bit, but I also don't have all of my usual ring lights and all sorts, so um, apologies. Um, so yeah, let us know if you've been to New Orleans. Let us know if you've been to Essence Festival. We love hearing all your stories. I'm actually, I'm using my pictures as a guide for what I've been up to because I've been drinking a lot. Like I need a detox when I get back. I mean, drink responsibly, everyone. I'm not fucking condoning this behavior, but it's just everywhere here. And I am on holiday. So um, we're staying at the amazing Maison St. Charles, which is like perfect location for Essence Festival because I know that people don't usually like walk here, but we're from London, so we like to walk places. And it's about a 20 minute walk to the convention center where all the day stuff is, and about 20 minute walk to the um, Caesar Superdrome where the concerts are in the evening. So it's fucking awesome. Um, and it's like sort of just halfway in between um, the French Quarter downtown and the Garden District. So and the Garden District's got all these cute little boutiques and everything. I have noticed here in the States, I'm sure it's different when you step out of the tourist areas, but what we call charity shop, here they call them vintage, and then it's fucking expensive. So I've not been buying, I've, I've made a pledge this year to only buy secondhand clothes. I try to do that normally, but this year it's going to be only secondhand clothes. So I got very excited and then I got very unexcited. I don't want to sell an organ on this trip to fund my shopping addiction, partly because I don't think anyone will accept or pay high price for any of this body, body, yaddy. Um, all right, so the hotel, fucking amazing. Highly recommend. You've got a pool. Um, it's kind of like far enough outside of downtown that it's like quiet, um, which is nice because I like to party and then I like to go home and have a nap and sleep when I want to sleep. Um, I'm here with my friend Sarita. Some of you might have come out yet. I'm not entirely sure, but we talk about her a lot and we've got an episode with her on reality TV shows. It's so been awesome. Um, yeah, so I'm here with her. Uh, we went to the Museum of Death, I think on the first day. And I have to admit, I was like struggling with how I feel about it, right? Um, tell me what you guys think, okay? Um, there's no judgment. It's just, I know everyone comes to this like true crime genre with a slightly different idea about how to handle it. Um, so we always try to be very victim focused. We obviously try not to glamorize the crimes. Um, which you might argue we are doing by talking about it, but um, we try our best. We have our line and we try to stick, you know, to our boundaries and what we feel comfortable with. Um, and we definitely don't try to glamorize the killers and we try to avoid anything that we feel like they would profit from. So I don't like buying their books, for example, um, because I just think like, I don't want any of my fucking money going to you. Like I would love, 
maybe if I could find secondhand copies or something, but I would love to have a flick through, not own, because I don't want that fucking bad vibes in my house, but, um, you know, Dorothy Puente, the one, um, was it San Francisco? The one who had the boarding house and she was like poisoning her boarders who are a lot of vulnerable people, sort of drug addicts, homeless people, recovering um, addicts and so forth. And she used to poison them um, with her cooking and then keep on claiming their benefits and stuff. Um, <laughs> when she was in prison, she released a cookbook. So I would love to have a little flick through that book, but yeah, I wouldn't want to buy it and have her get my, oh, I don't know if she's dead or alive. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. That's my line. So we went to the Museum of Death and um, the people were absolutely fucking adorable. People, adorable. We didn't meet the owners. Apparently it's run by a, a husband and wife team. Um, and they had a lot of really interesting stuff that they must have collected from a million different sources. I actually asked them where they got their stuff. You know, it's like auctions and people donating the stuff to the museum and so forth. So they'll have like, you know, the artist sketches from the court, um, from trials and stuff. And they'll have like, um, hang on, I, wrote, I actually wrote a list of some of the stuff they had, right? So it's like, I've got to remember this. And you can't take pictures in there. So I had to take notes. Um, Ed Gaines gravestone, like a photo of it um, and his fingerprints. Um, they had drawings from Son of Sam because you know he used to write these letters and illustrate a lot of them. Um, don't ask me how they got this one. Eileen Warnes's underwear from Death Row. So she's the one that used to kill a lot of men. She had an accomplice. <clears throat> and um, yeah, her underwear. Uh, dirt from the garden from Dorothy Puente, the one I just mentioned, and also a copy of that cookbook, but you couldn't flick through it. That would have been really like, I would have enjoyed that. Um, but they had one of her handwritten recipes. Um, they had court pictures from Ted Bundy. They had like the Unabomber's high school um, yearbook and stuff. Um, but then they also, this is where the problematic stuff comes in. They had a lot of artwork by a lot of serial killers, John Wayne Gacy and so forth. Um, and apparently the museum actually started off in its first art incarnation as an art exhibit of serial killers artwork. This is where I'm like, I really don't know where I stand. Help me out, help me form an opinion. I'm happy to say when I don't know enough on something to have a strong opinion either way, but it makes me feel a bit icky. Um, like I said, because I don't want to like glamorize. And, and again, I feel like a hypocrite because I would love to see some of this stuff, but I just I feel like I just want to do it in a way where they don't benefit in any way. Um, but the, the other thing that they had was a lot of like crime scene photos. And I struggle with that. Like they had a lot of Charles Manson stuff and they had a lot of crime scene photos. Um, but like before they moved the bodies from, you know, so Sharon Tate, and same with OJ, OJ crime scene photos. And they had like pictures of like um, Marilyn Monroe's autopsy. So Marilyn Monroe dead. And that's where I like, I think I do have an opinion. And I, I don't think that honors the victims very much um you know they they're dead they died in a really horrible way and I just feel like um it's important to learn about these crimes and so forth but like to try to do it in a way that that gives them as much dignity as possible because they definitely had that someone tried to take that away in the most awful way in their last moments so I think that's my biggest struggle um but it is an interesting debate and I would love to hear thoughts on it um they also said that they got a lot of the stuff by um, interacting, being pen pals with Richard Ramirez, lots of Richard Ramirez stuff. And I can't remember who else they said they were, the owners were in regular contact with. <sighs> Again, that I just feel like, don't talk to them. Don't give them more fucking ego boosts. That's my gut reaction. But like I said, open to debate. We would love to hear it. Um, so what else do we do? Uh, a lot of pictures of alcohol. Um, we went to Lafitte. I hope I'm saying these words right. Cause like, I try to say everything with a Frenchy accent cause we speak French and then they're, but the, the accent here is weird. So you, I'm staying in Maison, St. Charles. Um, yeah, so Lafitte black shop, uh, blacksmith shop, which is 
a bar. Um, they call it the oldest bar in uh, the US. Apparently it's not, it's a, the bar in the oldest building or something. I don't know, but they have this drink. It's purple, it's called like the voodoo tea or something. It's really good. I, a bunch of stuff I didn't think that I would like in a drink and a color that shouldn't be put inside your body. But I drank a lot of them. Um, we went to the Museum of Voodoo. Um, I'm with my friend Sarita, and that is very much her um, her spiritual background um, and what draws her, not necessarily voodoo, but a lot of like the African and the Afro-Caribbean spirituality. So we've been doing a lot of that stuff, which um, has been super interesting for me and obviously very, very interesting for her. Um, so the Museum uh, of Voodoo was absolutely amazing. Um, they did let you take pictures. So... Um, I will be posting some of those. There was a lady there who um, was working there called Madame Cinnamon Black. Find her on Facebook and Instagram. And she was just so fucking awesome. Um, so yeah, definitely worth a little visit. Um, one thing I am struggling with, help me out, I'm vegetarian and I don't like fried stuff. So I'm like living on grits, which I love. But why? just need like a salad or a green thing you know any tips <laughs> the other thing is I have to specify constantly I'm vegetarian because even if something doesn't say that it's got half a chicken on it on the menu it'll arrive and it'll have half a chicken on it or you order beans and it's got fucking sausages in it so um I'm just having to emphasize everywhere I go that I'm freaking vegetarian um, I was really happy because next to the Voodoo Museum, there was a Palestinian flag flying uh, nearby and someone had written a bunch of quotes, like human rights quotes from recent uh, reports um, that have come out in particular from Israeli human rights organizations, Bet Selim, et cetera. Um, so yeah, represent, took some pictures on the flag. Um, we, did, we did two tours while we're here. And they were very different, you know, like with the tour, it really depends on the tour guide, the vibe, et cetera, et cetera. So they were both really good. I was happy I went on both. One of them was, what's his name? Kobe. Um, and he was obsessed with the band Him. And like, when I say obsessed, I saw that he had a Him heartogram necklace. So I was like, oh, you like Him? And he was like, yeah. And then proceeded in showing me like several tattoos related tattoos and then I was looking at him the more I looked the more it was like you know find the things in the drawing game or whatever the like a breast a bracelet with a little hardogram charm and um you know his wallet had one and this blah, blah, blah. and then at the end his umbrella he tapped it and the light came out the bottom and it was a hardogram I was like make that yourself like do they sell these things in shops um and I told him that I had uh, had a drink with the lead singer of him when I was like 16, my, I had a boyfriend who was obsessed with him. And um, we went to go see them at the garage. We went to the pub across the road, name I can't remember, it's still there. And um, I don't know who Billy Bellavilla, that's really racist. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I just cannot remember his name. Um, can't remember his name. He was at the bar, he was there with some people. And when he went up to the bar to order a drink, I was like, come on to my boyfriend, like, go on, let's go talk to him. And he was like, mm, I'm shy. I was, I'm not shy. Mm, I can be shy, but 16 year old D was definitely not fucking shy. She thought she knew everything. So um, I went to the bar and we did a shot together. So I told Kobe, our tour guide, this. And as a result, he became a little bit obsessed with me, wanted to know every single detail. But I was 16. We drank one shot. We're talking about a three minute interaction here. Um, but this guy was like Cajun boy, um, definitely hammed that up a lot uh, for the tour, but fine, each their own. Um, and that tour was a ghost tour, but I swear he talked about like two ghosts on this three hour tour. <laughs> I mean, it was really interesting. We walked around loads of um, interesting facts and stuff, um, quite funny and like, really really fun people on the tour as well like every everywhere we've met the tourists other tourists have also been absolutely lovely um so that was fun but then the next day we did another tour and it was vampires 
true crime and mystery tour. Um, obviously had true crime in the title, so we went for it, but it was going to slightly different places than um, the previous tour. So we were like, sounds good. This guy uh, was definitely more serious, definitely more actual information relayed to us. Um, and yeah, also really, really good. So, um, you know, sometimes you go on a holiday and you're like, oh God, I don't want to do all this tourist trappy stuff. But other times you just got to like give in a bit and be like, okay, they're touristy for a reason. We're not here long. Let's try to get as much in as possible. So that's what we did. Um, we have mentioned already that during our season break, we are going to be re-releasing some episodes from We Knew the Moon. Um, and we actually, Sarita and I recorded two episodes that were very New Orleans focused. One of mine, I presented to her on um, New Orleans. So I covered Madame LaLaurie, awful story. We saw her house on the tour. Well, um, I won't spoil it too much because I want you guys to go and listen to it. Um, I might re-release that just for Patreon. Um, so we'll see. And um, what else did I cover? The Axeman of New Orleans, really creepy tale. And um, Marie Laveau, uh, Le, uh, start again. Marie Laveau, um, the voodoo queen of New Orleans. So, um, and then she covered vampires where we talked about a lot of interview with the vampire, which was largely set in New Orleans. So that was another one where we talked about New Orleans a lot. Um, yeah, Bourbon Street, still fun. Frenchman Street, still fun. Do you know when you just like walk around, you can walk around with cocktail in your hand and you're hearing live music everywhere and people playing music on like upside down um, buckets and stuff, you know? and that's just really cute. I will notice that um, I know that there's areas of New Orleans that are still really suffering as a result of Katrina, even though it was years ago. Obviously, they cleaned up the tourist areas first. Um, but they've cleaned it up a lot more than I expected in the sense that when I came here like 20 years ago, even you still saw like homeless people and drunk people and um, definitely people under the influence of stronger substances. Um, but it's so much less now. I don't know. I don't know if that's just me or whatever. Um, so it just always makes me wonder where are they putting these people? Because they're clearly moving them off somewhere. Um, so I'm going to research that a bit more when I get home because that's awful. Went to the French market. Again, super touristy, but lots of, you know, you could, lots of like independent designer makers and stuff selling their stuff as well. So really, really, really cute. Um, and then Essence Festival started. So if you haven't been before, it's, a, it's really confusing if you haven't been before until you get here, then it makes a bit more sense. So like you've got a convention center where you have all the stuff during the day, like kind of like an expo kind of conference thing where you have talks, you have the market area where you have loads of like shops, designer makers and everything really, really fucking awesome. You have the beauty section where you have all the hair products and makeup and stuff like that. All of these are black owned businesses, um, usually like independent shops and stuff. Um, and then you've got like the food area, which I'm really gutted because we went there, we didn't get food from there because the queues were so long and we were so hungry. So if you do ever go to anything like that, don't wait till the last minute to eat. Um, I shopped a lot, I shopped so much. I didn't even think I would, but I did. Um, yeah. I'll post some pictures of some of the cute shit I bought. Um, and then um, we, and then in the evenings, you've got the concerts. So the convention is actually free. So you have loads of people that come into New Orleans for Essence Festival for the free part, which is, um, you know, all the different shops, the talks. They have a film festival and they do have some other things you can buy ad hoc tickets for. Like I know they've got some after parties and so forth. Um, the after parties that run on the, at the same time as the concerts. If you go to concerts, you miss the after party. Um, but then you pay to go to the con concerts, three nights of concerts. You can either buy individual tickets for whatever night you want or do what we did, which was buy all three tickets um, for all three nights. Night one, Lauren Hill. <laughs> it was hilarious because she was 
there to celebrate 25 years of her Miseducation of Lauren Hill album, but apparently because of legal problems, she couldn't sing a single song from it. Um, she was also like three hours late, but she was due to come on at 10 past midnight and was like two or three hours late. So I was like shocked because it was at Caesars Superdrome, so massive, massive venue, half empty and people leaving throughout the, like, I can't, I've never, I don't think been in a thing like that where, you know, the headlining act comes on and half the people are already gone or leaving. Um, Janelle Monet, fucking new fangirl crush on her. Um, she was awesome. Dougie Fresh was amazing. Karis won, like, cause it's 50 years of hip hop. There were loads of people from like when I was growing up and it was just amazing. Jagged Edge, uh, Juvenile, um, yeah, so good. Uh, then we had, what we have? Um, Saturday, oh my God. Saturday was like the big night, it seemed, right, for the concert. So it was heaving the entire time. Um, Ice Cube, DJ Quick, E40, uh, Ice T, yeah, that's right, Ice Cube and Ice T. Same time, same place. Lady of Rage, I forgot how much I missed her. Um, and then you had Ludacris, Lil Jon, look, it was so good. Jill Scott was fucking phenomenal. I didn't really think, I, I, I didn't think anything when I saw her on there. Um, I knew some of her songs and everything, but honestly, she was fucking amazing. Um, and then Missy Elliott, Missy Elliott, fucking queen fucking queen like there were definitely loads of acts that were um, amazing loads of new artists or older artists that I hadn't really heard of that I want to listen more of but Missy Elliott fucking delivered she was awesome um and then last night was the last night of the concert and um what's it who did we have uh Eve Um, Mia X, so again, I had lots of friends from the area and Mia X was one of the ones that they loved. And she's the fucking amazing female vocalist on I'm About It, which is like kind of the South National Anthem by Master P. Um, so she, she was amazing. Um, Trina and Salt and Pepper. And not only that, but the entire night, the guest DJ was DJ Spinderella. It was so good. Um, we had a surprise set by Lil Wayne, which was amazing. And then the night was rounded off with Megan Stallion. She was awesome. She was so awesome. Um, she did this really weird thing. I don't know if this is a her thing or a US thing where it was really cute. She got a bunch of people from the sort of front couple of rows up on the stage to come and like twerk with her. For a bit you know to some music and it was super cute she was picking out cutesy people and they came up and it was like a mother and a daughter team and everything it was so cute um and so they they were twerking for a minute or two and then she sent them off the stage then she picked another round of people to come up and she did it all again i was like all right okay and then they came off the stage after their couple of minutes of twerking with megan the stallion which you know would have been a highlight of their life i'm sure and then she got a third round of people up on the stage to like twerk with her. But by this point, us and the fucking gods, which is a nice way of saying all the way at the fucking back on the balcony, we're like, right, okay. Like half an hour of strangers on stage just twerking. And they twerked real good. They twerked it real good. Um, but you know, bear in mind by this point, it's like 1 a.m. And I am 40. So um, yeah, it was really good. Honestly, as successful, I'm fucking come back again. It was amazing. Um, what am I doing today? Getting a bat tattoo. Can't wait. I cannot wait. I will show you guys, obviously. I'm going to Lucky Dagger Tattoo, which um, I booked because it was black owned and queer owned. And I just felt very much in the spirit of Essence Festival. Um, and then by coincidence, it's a block away. <laughs> So thank you, universe. Um, and then 
tonight I'm taking my friend Sarita to go and have some oysters and I don't eat oysters, but I'm hoping that I could have a side salad. Um, yesterday for breakfast, I ordered a salad with a side of grits and no joke, I had a big bowl of grits with like two leaves. <laughs> so, um, what's going on? <laughs> anyway, um, guys, I miss my sister so much. I just want to do a little shout out to my sister. My sister Rhonda, my sister Rhonda. She would have loved this. I don't know if you guys know this, but um, she did music and culture at university and um, she specialized in Palestinian hip hop. And I think her dissertation, oh my God, sorry, Rhonda, if I got this wrong, but her dissertation was like talking about um, hip hop as um, the sort of social justice movement for the underdog the people without a voice. And she talked a lot about the comparisons and the differences of Palestinian hip hop to sort of original hip hop here in the States, um, where it was very much, you know, marginalized communities talking about the shit that they're going through. And that is what we have in our Palestinian hip hop. Um, so I just know she would have loved it here. <laughs> so hopefully one day I can bring her here. Um, she wouldn't have liked the heat and the humidity. The heat, maybe. The humidity, no, because she didn't like how her hair goes to pubes. But mine's looking okay. Anyways, guys, um, I'm going to head off and get tattooed. Um, more on my trip to New Orleans. I just wanted to do a little Patreon special. We're going to be upping our Patreon game soon um, when I get back, because we love you guys. So thank you so much. Um, and yeah, give me tips. Where can I eat? What's up with creamer? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Love you. Bye.